in the field, on the field. Everything we do, we dominate. That means kill them fly with a sledgehammer. When it's not about the fly, you just keep. It's about the other fly that's watching. Go dogs, and welcome once again to the Chennis Berry Show. As we talk South Carolina State football with the head dog, Coach Chennis Berry, the South Carolina State Bulldogs coach. A week off, how was your week for you guys? First of all, your gold dolls is getting much better. Now, I'm working on it. It's got good enthusiasm, man. So I appreciate it. My off week, uh, what I would say is, was amazing. You know, I thought our young men got better. Uh, first and foremost, we got some rest, too. I think rest is extremely important. You know, as you can get ready to go down the long haul of the season, we, after our eye week that we just had, we got six straight, so we have to be smart and, you know, basically what I call a pitch count. So how we practice guys and practice, things of that nature is extremely important. But we got a chance to really work on ourselves last week. We wanted to work on the fundamentals, things that were, that have, may have been kind of slowing us down a little bit. I'm not going to say stopping us, but slowing us down. We worked on our penalties, work, special teams. Worked on what we call a self scout, where we get a chance to see what other people are looking at when they watch us on field, and uh, try to break some tendencies and things of that nature. But I thought our practices last week was amazing. We had three days. We went Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and uh, just to see the energy and the excitement, got a chance to get some younger guys some reps. And then on Thursday, man, it was exciting. We had what we call a scout hole. We had the scout offense versus scout D, and you're talking about exciting uh, 30, 40 minutes football. It was live on the quarterback. It was an amazing time, and our scout offense got the best of the scout D, and they went up and down. You know, but more than anything, just to see the excitement. The players that typically play, that cheer on the guys that don't play all the time. To get, so, and that's the style to be able to evaluate what the future looks like here at South Carolina State. It was a great week. You start talking about scouting team coaches, and most people don't know. You just mentioned that at the end that the scouting team, we guys we don't really get a chance to play, but they spend so much time because they serve as I'm tackling them. These are props, but the guys who start and play most of the time, they need these guys over the course of the season. And the scout teams are so critical, and I, I, I sometimes call them the look team. They really will get us prepared to go because it's important that they give us the right looks of what we're getting ready to face and go see these on So. In our, our scout team, we take pride in it. We watch film with those guys. We show them the looks that we want to be able to see so our offenses, defenses, special teams get quality looks so we can get quality reps throughout. I coach, of course, the first part of the season has been kind of tough. It starts to pick up now because we're coming up on Fort Valley, Fort Valley State, a team from Fort Valley, Georgia. Coach, you're very familiar with. The fun thing about this team, I saw a little bit about them, Coach, and what Kendrick Lamar says, they not like us. You look at Fort Valley State, they kind of remind me a little bit of us. Fort Valley has a good football. And traditionally, you know about Fort Valley, especially where they're centrally located, right, in the central part of Georgia. They're always going to have talent. You go back to the 80s and then when they had Greg Oley and they had Tyrone Fool, they're always going to have talent. All right, but at the end of the day, you know, I really like our team versus this team. Uh, we respect all our opponents. We're going to be prepared for this opponent. Our young man, I just met with the leadership, cost a little bit ago, and I went around the room and just see their thoughts as we prepare for this next opponent. Our mission doesn't change. Just try to go one and all. We don't look at an opponent in terms of what level they're on. We're going to play the level of people to go across from. So our young man focus on the task at hand. They know it's about us working on us. Our minimizing mistakes, those self-inflicting negatives that kind of been haunting us through this season. But we really feel like a really good uh, out of conference schedule is very important. We've had a variety of different things. We've had SBS program, we've had FCS program, we've had Division II program. We, it's all about us putting it together before we get into MEAC playing. But Fort Valley State is next on the agenda in our mission. Talk about Fort Valley State because they have scored for over 40 points a game, four out of the six games they played this year. They put some points on the board. And that's why I say you can remind me of us. They got a really good quarterback. And a kid that reminds me of, okay, we'll meet more in this program with DeAndre Duhart. I'm talking about Brandon Marshall, I think is his name. He can really do it all. Man, they got a really good team. They got a really good offense. They they do some good things. Elvin Durham is the quarterback's name. Very, very talented dual threat quarterback. So Coach O'Dowd for the defense staff will have a hand. 
um, they were cut out for him in terms of slowing that young man down. And like you say, Marshall, the running back, he could nod the eye and cross the team. Man. He's a really good running back. Uh, so we respect our opponent. We know about him. I, I'm very familiar with that team. We've played against them in the team I left for the last few years, so I'm very familiar. Coach Sean Gibbs will do an amazing job of having these guys ready to go. Those Bulldogs will be ready. You know, I'm going back and talking about Brandon Marshall. This, how often do you see a team where a guy leads them in rushing, also leads them in receiving? He's a really good player. He really he, – he's, he's dynamic. He's he's an older guy. He's been in the program. He transferred in there. Uh, Expose him back, man. I think he can do a good job with that ball in his hand, but it's our job is to stop and run and force them to – he won the and had to pass the football. That won't change. We're we're gonna we're gonna aim at that, no doubt about it. Our young men will be ready to go. Our D line is already chopping at the bit. They understand what their mission is each and every week is to stop the run. And offensively, our mission is to try to run the football. Coach Rowan, talk about your leadership council. How important is the leadership council playing into a game like this when you're playing a division two team? You need somebody other than the coaches to make sure everybody's focused. And this is where the leadership council kind of steps in. Well, trust and believe our leadership comes first and all, second and all. Amazing group of guys from different positions. And they understand the mission. You know, it, we don't look at things like that because they know they, they, there's really good football on all of them. Football is football to us. We're going to play the people across from it. But when you have the leaders, you know, like an Aaron Smith, you know, like a Nick Tace, you know, Tyler Smith, Eric Phoenix, these guys are great leaders. So they won't let us look at the next opponent. They're going to focus on them urgency of now. We always talk about the urgency of now. There's no opportunity wasted. And in front of us right now, coming into all of C. Dawson State, it's for the state. And our mission is to go one and all. All right, so I have a Prisma Health Injury Report for this week on the Tennis Barry Show. And of course, it wasn't a game this past year in South Carolina State, but Coach, you know, it gives you an opportunity with that week off to kind of heal. Did you have any practices where you guys didn't even, just didn't hit or do anything just to kind of keep folks healthy? Well, Tuesday, we, we, we just went out there and helped. So, got a chance to get more, you know, mental reps. We got some physical reps, got some individuals. Then on you know, Wednesday and Thursday, we put on what we call shells, just held it shorter pass. Still had shorts on at the bottom. And, uh, you know, what we did a lot of this week is getting those guys that's been bagged up, that's been playing a lot of snaps. They took no physical reps. All the reps they took this week were mental. As a matter of fact, Eric Phoenix, he practiced literally all week, but he practiced really mentally. You know, he's got some, he got some individuals here, but when we got to the team period, he stood right next to me, the script in his hand, looking at the signals, and we always got middle reps. But to see him when we came back to practice on Sunday, he was able to do everything at full speed. So I think that week really helped him. That week really helped Nick Tate. We've been taking a lot of snaps. He's got a lot of middle reps last week. Keyshawn Tone, some of the guys that we're counting on. All right, Jaden Brawl, guys got a lot of middle reps last week. They've taken a lot of snaps. We're getting physically healthy as we go down the small halls. Extremely important as we, as we go down the strip. All right, we're going to take a break here on the Tennis Berry Show. When we come back, we're going on Coach's Spotlight. We're going to put our running backs coach, Rashad Austin, in the Coach's Spotlight on this edition of the Tennis Berry Show. A single moment can ignite a passion. With every play, a spirit of teamwork is forged and determination evolves into success. Life is the ultimate team sport and a trusted teammate makes all the difference. Our team at Founders Federal Credit Union works hard every day to offer the financial tools you need backed by unrivaled member service. Relax, you're with Founders. No one takes care of families like Prisma Health. As South Carolina's largest health system, we have nearly 600 primary care doctors across the Midlands and upstate. So you can choose the one who's right for you with a more personalized approach, more locations, and more convenience, including 24-7 virtual urgent care and online or in-person visits with your primary care doctor. We're doing even more to help you be your healthiest you. Prisma Health, the primary care experts. Go dogs. And welcome back to the Chinnis Berry Show. We're talking about head coach Chinnis Berry, South Carolina State. Right now we're going up. Coach's spotlight. Rashad Austin, running backs coach. How'd you guys get together? Tell you what, I've, I've bumped into Coach Austin a lot on the road recruiting. And he's a true South Carolina guy. And, you know, he's from Charleston, South Carolina. And when I met him, every time I see him, he was very passionate about recruiting. 
And, uh, you know, he does an amazing job everywhere he's been in terms of recruiting. And to me, it's about relationships. Then when I got a chance to sit down with him and meet him, see what kind of all coach he is, I think Rashard Austin has a bright future in his profession. He's, he's very talented. He's well-spoken. He has amazing enthusiasm. I think, I tell you what, I think I mean, he's going to be a special coach as we go down, down the stretch and for the rest of his future. All right, folks, let's meet South Carolina State running backs coach Rashard Austin. Hey, this is Coach Austin, and I'm on the Coach's Spotlight. So, Coach, walk us through your background as a running backs coach. Were you a running back? Oh, yeah. So, um, growing up, man, I, growing up, I've always played running back. I played multiple positions, but, you know, coming through, like, once I got in high school and all that stuff, man, I I was a running back. So, I went to college, played running back in college, um, and then got into coaching um, and, 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 and started coaching running back with the first position I coached in, at the high school level. So, um, but coached a number of different positions, but um, now I'm back coaching uh, the running back. So it's, it's, I'm, I'm a running back by trade, man. So this thing is second nature to beat. Um, obviously, I'm, I'm, I'm always looking to grow and looking to learn. I don't, I don't got it all figured out. And, and nor do I try to act like I do. Um, I'm always looking to learn. But, you know, running back, this running back thing, man, it's, 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 it's in me. It ain't on me. You know what I mean? Where are you from originally? Like, how did you and Coach Burry come together and ultimately leading you to South Carolina State? So man, I'm originally from from Charleston, South Carolina. Uh, grew up in North Charleston, a uh, little, little neighborhood called Murray Hill, uh, right there in North Charleston, man. So both of my parents actually went to school here. This is where my parents met, right here. So um, you know, it, this place has always kind of been near and dear to me, man. I grew up coming to South Carolina State Bulldog football games with my dad, coming to homecomings, coming to youth day with the church, man. And, and so I, I've been in Oliver C. Oliver C. Dawson Stadium a lot. You know what I mean? In my childhood, you know, and, and you know, me meeting Coach Barry, uh, I met Coach Barry, um, I think it was 2021. Uh, 2021, man, I was at Bluefield State, and I, my area was South Carolina, so I was crewing South Carolina. Um, and at the time, the state championship games for South Carolina the whole weekend was at Benedict, right? So, at Be so he was the head coach at Benedict at the time, so... Um, you know, all the coaches would be on the field in the back of the end zone there. And, you know, I saw him. So I'm like, man, I'm going to go pay some respect. So I know this, he's the head coach at this university here. I'm going to go say what's up to him. And I knew he was a part of my fraternity, man. He's he, he a bro. So I wanted to go talk to him, wrap it up, uh, and, and chop it up with him a little bit. So went to him, shook his hand, man, just introduced myself and, 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 and said, you know, congratulations, coach, on the success you've had so far and, and good luck the rest of the season. So that, but, but that was that, that, that's kind of how uh, me and him uh, met. Follow-up question: What is the philosophy uh, for your group, for your running back? So our philosophy uh, when we have the ball in our, in our possession, man, is we're gonna run hard when it's hard to run. We're gonna run hard when it's hard to run, man. That's something you know I, I kind of picked that up from from my brother Jawan Lewis, uh, you know. But it's, it's something that 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 that, that um, I, I fell in love with, man. And and, and, and that's real. As, as a running back, I and mean, as a guy's a running back by trade, man, it's not always gonna be pretty. Sometimes you have to be BYOB, and, and if, if the folks at home don't know what that means, that means being your own blocker, right? Sometimes it's gonna be an extra guy in the in, in, in the fit that we don't account for, and you're gonna have to just make a play, and you gotta be your own blocker. You're gonna have to break a tackle. It's not gonna be pretty all the time. Everything's not going to be cut and dry. It's not going to be a big old hole every time, right? They want scholarship too. But sometimes you have to just run hard when it's hard to run. And that's that's in our DNA. Like if they took our DNA, that's what it says. Run hard when it's hard to run. And last question, Coach. If you can play any or coach any position outside of running back, what would it be? Outside of running back, man? I've coached a couple different positions, man. I tell you what, I've, I've coached a number of different positions. And so I've, I've coached running backs before, coached receivers uh, for a number of years, uh, coached quarterbacks last year. One position I haven't coached, but I would love to coach. If I if I, if I could pick, man, it's probably O-line. Hey, Coach, I want to thank you for coming up on here and heading up and leading up on the coach's spotlight. I really appreciate this. Oh, yeah, no problem, man. Anytime. Go to Go dogs. You've never been afraid to put in the work. The extra early, extra late, extra, extra work. Because you understand that education is the key that unlocks everything. Better pay, better hours, better opportunities, a better you. And playing the lottery is no different. Getting educated before you play gives you the tools you need to be a better player. 
like knowing when to play and when to take a rain check. Visit sceducationlottery.com slash better you to be a better player. Why do we travel? Why do we fly? Are we called by the excitement of untold adventures in faraway places? Driven to shape the future of our world or to share our world with future generations? We designed Columbia Metropolitan Airport for you and her and them. So when the day arrives for your next journey, we'll be ready to get you there. Columbia Metropolitan Airport, fly with ease. Go dogs, and welcome back to the Chinus Berry Show. As we go now into our player's spotlight, and a guy who has been spotlighted by the Bulldogs, we've used him a lot this year, and has really come in at big impact coach, DeAndre Duhart, a running back. Special young man. Great young man, first and foremost. Duhart is an amazing talent. Duhart's about 215, 220 pounds. He's a downhill guy. He can make you miss the space. He'll run through you as well. But boy, he's an amazing human being. Duhart doesn't talk a whole lot. You know, you're going to have to really uh, uh, start a conversation to get anything out of him. But he's a mature young man. He takes his academic shoes. He takes just life serious, you know, and uh, he comes every, to work every day on time, ready to go. I really, really love it. That DeAndre Duhart is our star. All right, DeAndre Duhart, and then I'll play a spotlight. Hey, this is DeAndre Duhart, and this is the player spotlight. What was the hardest part of transferring to a new program and having new teammates? Well, the hardest part of me, for me was basically, uh, I would say, uh, fitting in at first. You know, I had to get everything right to make sure, you know, the algorithm, make sure I fit into everything going on here. But once I started, I fit it in, everything on from there was, you know, simple. Hey, you have a unique style of running the football. And I'm sure when you out there, your eye just goes blank. And you, all, you, all you're doing is just relying on your instincts. But I'm sure you have a lot of fans, and I'm sure a lot of people have seen you play and run the ball. Who did he say that you run the ball like? So um, most recently, I've been getting a lot of, I run like the running back from the Chiefs. I've got his name. Um, uh, uh, Pacheco. Yeah, a lot of people said him or I get Marshawn Lynch. And yeah, that's what I've been having mostly. Uh, describe the relationship between you and the offensive line. <laughs> so with the offensive line, um, I started with Bit Baby. I, um, I got chemistry with Bit Baby already from, you know, the previous school, so. Um, I know, like, running behind Big Baby, I kind of know what he can and what he can't do and, you know, what he's strong at. So, I would say on the line, he like the most, I'm the most comfortable, comfortable with him. But other than that, all the whole oh, line, I feel like all of them good. Once they get into their rhythm, I feel like they hard to stop. So, I say um, just all bond and all connection on knowing what they can and what they can't do. We, um, you know, together we, we do the best. What do you think your strengths are as a football player and what areas would you like to improve? Um, as far as improving, I feel like I can know more, um, break down defense more. Um, you know, basically know why we run in this game and this game or whatever. And as far as my strengths, I feel like I bring like physicality. I feel like I'm a good, hard nosed running back, and you know, that's always about how the game is, and I'm trying to keep it going. So everybody knows you as a running back, this, this tough beast that goes between the tackles and runs people over. But I'm sure there's more than you than just football. What do you like to do in your free time? So in my free time, I actually own a mobile detailing business, you know. So when I want to relax and get my thoughts away from football, I go out and clean cars and stuff, you know. What hat do you like to wear most? Like, what are you most proud of for DeAndre Duhart? I probably would say um, I use football. Like, far as getting the younger people who are like younger than me are looking up to me and, you know, teaching them about stuff outside of football, where it's like business credits or, you know, doing different stuff outside of football, knowing that, you know, football will end one day. So I said I'm most proud about teaching them stuff about that. Could you tell us something that your teammates might not know about? So I write with my right hand, but as far as ball, running the ball, I with my left, or throwing, I throw with my left, everything with my left, but I only write with my right hand. What's the message that your current running back coach gives you that you'll always win? I would say, uh, run hard with the hard run. That stuck with me. I feel like that um, kind of explains my running style. If you could play any position outside of running back, what would you play? And the 
I would want to play DM, but I know I probably have to play linebacker. But in the dream world, I probably would play DM. Hey, DeAndre, man. Hey, I appreciate you coming out here. Appreciate you giving some of your hosts, your blessed, your value, time to come out here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Appreciate you for having me. Absolutely, man. Go dogs. Go dogs. Hey, grab me one, too. Come to South Carolina State University. Here you'll find unlimited possibilities for wherever you want your college career to take you. Since 1896, we've trained generations of scholars and leaders, building a legacy of excellence. Explore our stellar academic programs, including nuclear engineering, military science, biology, education, computer science, agribusiness, and more. Enjoy student-focused activities and organizations and discover your passion. Dare to be great. Enroll now and join our legacy of excellence at South Carolina State University. Your home is where your memories live, where you laugh, and where you love. We understand the importance of the valuables under your roof, tangible and intangible alike. So no matter what's around the corner, we'll be there, offering you and your family the support that's made Farm Bureau Insurance a trusted name for nearly 70 years. You deserve more. You deserve a promise. Yo, dog, and welcome back to the Chinna Spirit Show. We talked with South Carolina State Coach Chinna Spirit. Coach Spirit, we talked about Fort Valley State. This team, and better they go over the past few years, have really been the top of them teams in this car. Well, they've been consistently good. Yeah, they have been, uh, in the over years, you can look at Fort Valley State, they, they've had a, a pretty consistent program. What we prepared for that team, you know, like I say, man, we, we understand the urgency of now and what the we keep talking, talking about, about stacking games, stacking practices, stacking games. And you know, we won two in a row. We want to try to continue to, on that chair, just building confidence. Yeah. So this game is important. Why? Because it's the next game. So regardless of what the opponent is, we're focused on now. That's no opportunity wasting. Are you going to be ready to go against the good more valid states? Earlier the program, you got to talk about how this team, how similar our team. We talk basically offense, but on the defensive side, coach, them big up front athletic linebackers got some pretty good job defensive backs as well, and they get after you on defense. You know, they do a good job. You know, they they do a really good job, and it all starts up front. They they have good size. They have a lot of veteran presence on the front. And the action guys, linebacker on the exactly. second level, they do a really really good job as well. Their middle linebacker number three, he does a great job, kind of controlling it all. They've had a couple guys. And their back end to play a lot of snaps. So, you know, all in all, they're going to put 11 guys up and be able to ready to go compete. And at the end of the day, our young men have to be ready to go. And we're going to focus on just getting ready for the opponent. You know, I, I, I look at our team as, as we practiced last night. You know, they were just so open and locked in. And they know there's so many things that we hadn't played our best football yet as a whole entire team, offense, defense, special team. And they just want to go do that. Just maximize the dial, maximize the drive, win the series, focus on now. Nah, so we can go find a way to go in the kitchen. That takes us right into the Davis Toyota the keys to the game because there's a lot of good keys coming into this particular ball game, coach. What would be the keys against Fort Valley State? You play them many times, you understand the style that they play. And uh, I think perhaps you're going to be the most experienced person from our standpoint, imagine being black, been, you know, against it for so many. Yeah, 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 I got a pretty good feel of what they do and what they try to do and how they try to do it. You know, ultimately, whatever we did in the past has nothing to do with Saturday, October 19th, and then ball kicks off at 2 o'clock. It's about that moment at that moment right now. And, uh, you know, our, our guys will be ready to go. You know, think about Fort Valley. They'll be well coached. They'll be good on offense, defense, and have special teams. And our guys just got to focus on winning the important things. And one of the things we talked about that we want to work on is great eye discipline. I just lose the training in pool. You know, having your eyes in the right place, not having your eyes in the night for you. Making sure you're reading your keys on the defensive side. And then often it's trying to eliminate those self-inflicted negatives. 
when we get a big play or a touchdown, an explosive play, they come back for a penalty. So we've been really working on our penalties, working on urgency and finding out all the things that is important to us. Like we talked about in practice, we're going to bring the yellow flags out. There's a flag in practice. We're going to address it right then. We keep talking about situational football. If you watch the Ohio State game versus uh, Oregon this past week, you heard Dan Lanning at the end of the game. He said, as long as they can control Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you can get to Saturdays. Saturdays come easy, but we practice on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. We're just talking about winning situational football through the week. So when we get a little situation in the game, they've seen it before. The only difference between practice and game day, it's just going to be more people watching. So I can't wait to see our guys go out there and play Saturday. They're excited. When you get off week, man, you know, the energy, when they come back with fresh legs, you know, out there off week, they're ready to go. So I'm excited about seeing what we look like in practice tomorrow and in practice for the rest of the week when we go out and perform on Saturday. Share me about the middle aspect and going back to the penguins because you mentioned penguins several times on the show. Uh, how do you work on them? And you talk about you break out the flags. Is there a situation where maybe God just doesn't know the rules and he has to be explained to them? How do you do this, coach? Well, we try to educate them first and foremost. There's new rules, there's things that they, their officials are emphasizing this year. Things are important, but you know, the things that get you in trouble, the things that least get in trouble with me is the preaching out the host of athletes. Football is football. I mean, there may be a holding call here, here. Even though if we work good technique, get our hands inside, elbows tight, we should be good in that. But but the ones that drive you nuts is like off size, all starts, or things that happen after the play. Those are the things we're trying to clean up. I want them to play ball. I don't want them to be timid. I don't want them to go out there and go through the motions and, and try to look to avoid getting penalty. All I want them to understand, play football, but do it the right way with the proper fundamentals. Proper technique, proper pad level, just eliminate the pre and post snap penalties. What's it going to take basically you for Kinsville Valley State on Saturday? No, no, nothing ever changed for us. We got to win the penalty battle. We just talked about penalties. We got to win the effort battle. It has nothing to do with talent. We got to win the turnover battle. We can't turn it over. We got to create takeaways from them. We got to win the explosive battle. We want to have more explosive plays than they have. We feel like we will win those four key battles. We like our chances of winning the football. See what on folks on Saturday, Bulldogs taking on Fort Valley State. Coach, we need a big crowd. I mean, I mean, we need another homecoming game on Saturday. And obviously, Dolphins and Bulldogs State really need Jerry Street. Listen, did you see my my face light up? Cause I just <laughs> I just can't wait to get back out there. You know, you guys spoiled me a little bit on that first one, man. I that Bulldog walk. Let's turn it up again. You know, let's get out there and pack, pack the Oliver C. Dawson Stadium. Let's. Let's come out and support these Bulldogs because they deserve it. They go out and represent this university each and every day. And they go out on that field and playing field and representing South Carolina State University. They represent when they go into those classrooms day in and day out. They love this place. And all they want to return to see from a stream of Bulldog fans out there regarding the Blue Hole, rocking the house. We're excited. DJ Warner, he's already tuning up the ones and the twos, the one on one. They're ready to rock the house, but we want to have a great atmosphere, man. It's youth day. We're excited to see all the youth in the community come out. And because I tell our players, man, they have an obligation. And when, when the youth are looking at you, because one day they want to be sitting in the same seats that they're sitting in. So I think that's important. I believe in attitude and gratitude. Give back to this community. This community has been good to us. We really, really love this Orangeburg community and the whole entire state of South Carolina. So we don't just want the Orangeburg community. We want the whole state of South Carolina. Come and support us as we go with the battle this week versus Fort Valley State. And we want to thank all our sponsors, those people who make this show possible. So many things at South Carolina State possible. Boundless Federal Credit Union, Frisma Health, Fruit and Light, and their SAC to Give Back program. David Starr, you're the keys to the game. MUSC, South Carolina Farm Bureau, Pepsi, Columbia Metropolitan Airport, South Carolina Education and Water. Tell the fans, tell those sponsors you appreciate what they do. Russ here in South Carolina State. That's going to be over this edition of the Cheddar's Very Show. We want to see you on Saturday. The Bulldogs take on Fort Valley State. And of course, next week, right here, Cheddar's Very Show. Hell no. Good on. In the field, on the field, everything we do, we dominate. That means kill them fly. With a sledgehammer. But it's not about the fly, you just keep. It's about the other.